SAP HCM consultant and I am from Pakistan. Okay. Okay. So next. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Rajesh. I'm a success factor and plus central consultant. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. This is Rani. Uh, I'm a SAP HCM consultant, Hyderabad. Oh, next. Hello. Hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Who, who is the presenter here? Is the baby? Uh, it's Karthik. It's Karthik. Hi. Let me know once you're able to see my screen. Yes, Karthik. Yes, Karthik. Okay. So, uh, this before discussing about uh, uh, the, I mean, uh, the ECB payroll, okay. I want to give us some background. Uh, what about uh, EC payroll? Then we'll discuss about the, uh, sorry, SAP uh, HCM. Then we'll discuss about what additionally uh, delivered part of this, uh, uh, I mean, ECP, okay. So first thing, uh, I think how many are uh, working in a SAP HCM consultants? HCM or payroll consultants? Yes. Myself, Rani. Okay. 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 Myself, Summer. Okay. So this uh, SCP HCM, uh, uh, sorry, the ECP uh, system delivered is advanced. Yes, I'm please. sorry to disturb here. I'm not into. I'm not from the HCM background. I'm from uh, Success Factor background itself. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Sure. So this SAP Employee Central Payroll is an additional, uh, I mean, additional, uh, I mean, advanced, uh, advanced version of the SAP HCM. Okay. So we'll uh, first we will discuss about the what exactly SAP HCM will do in a SAP HCM. So in SAP HCM, so far, it's a system based uh, login uh, where you will have an on-premise login with using a SAP GUI and you can log in uh, related to your client and you maintain all your master data or all your configuration data. It's like uh, uh, personal employees, personal data, organizational data and payroll related, uh, uh, payroll related data maintenance, postings and uh, payroll executions, pay, uh, schemas, PCRs, uh, personal uh, sorry, uh, company code. These are all your ECP, sorry, these are all SAP HCM. These are all SAP HCM. Uh, inbuilt uh, in a SAP uh, on-premise system. Okay. So this is how at present uh, uh, SAP HCM build. So this is a old version. Old version or this is a existing process of the SAP HCM where you can maintain all the data of the employees. So once we complete the configuration of the SAP HCM, okay, in a regular, regular every month, we need uh, some employees data to execute our payroll. Okay, so for ex to executing our payroll or any other data, you need a you need a master data uh, or delta changes compared to the last month to current month. So that delta changes, which uh, sometimes employ, I mean the business may have a other system where they maintain all the data, and they will bring all the data into the SAP HCM through LSFW or any upload programs. Okay, this this will done uh, on a monthly basis. So it, it here it again depends on the client to client. So some clients they maintain direct data directly on the ERP system, and some clients they maintain the data in the legacy system or third uh, or other internal software, and from there they extract the data and then with using upload pros upload programs or LSMW, 
the data will be loaded into the uh, in, uh, into the SAP HCM system for the current month. So once this data loaded into the system, then we will do the uh, reconciliation of the user will be in the sense uh, users. Okay. So they do the reconciliation whether the data has been loaded successfully or not. And uh, then they will, uh, then once this reconciliation complete on the database, then uh, uh, employees data, then they uh, execute a payroll and they will see if there are any errors occurred on this payroll simulations. So this is how general process. So the base for the master data, the base for the payroll for current uh, month execution is a master data. So that should be come from any source. Okay. This is how your SAP HCM uh, background or HCM, uh, I mean, functionality at present, I mean, in excluding the employee central payroll. Okay. And this SAP HCM is a different model combination. So it's a, it contains a PA, personal administration, employees, personal data, organizational data, and uh, your recruiting process, ESS MSS, and your leaves, I mean, leaves in the sense, uh, time related uh, setup, everything. Yeah, SAP on premise, you will have uh, all the functionalities in a uh, one login. After this, SAP HCM. SAP brings a new version that is called like a, called as a success factor employee center. This is for the maintenance of your master data. If if I take the SAP regular regular payroll in a SAP HCM, okay, the employees personal data, organizational data, time management, everything which we which is a part of your payroll. Leave the uh, personal data. Uh, I mean personal administration in the sense. The relevant info types like a one no, zero seven like that. This is even though these are info types are for the personal administration, but this will be considered part of your payroll. So this information which we will take it from the other system and load it into the EC, uh, into the SAP HCM system. Sometimes you may update directly into the SAP HCM system because you may receive a, a I mean you may receive the changes through a mail or something. Depends on your company organization uh, workforce. Maybe if you have a very limited, maybe 100 employees or 200 employees or 1000 employees, you don't have any other software. You may use only SAP HCM, but you will not give access this to the employees. So you will receive a data from the employees and you will update into the SAP HCM system. So for this, SAP brings a new concept called a employee center to maintain your master data. This is a system of records, okay? Let's suppose I want to maintain an employee's personal data, so which is a cloud version. So thus employee central is majorly implemented initially for the PAOM or a little bit on the time management. So is employee central is for the maintenance of your data. Your, your employees can log in and employees can see their data, their address, personal details, contact numbers, and uh, uh, their positions, jobs, everything they can see. but that employee central is only for the data maintenance purpose. Okay. So our and your SAP HCM is a payroll engine where you here where you it, it do the plus or minus calculations. It calculates the tax directly. It calculates the gratitude directly. It calculates the garnishment directly. So only you need to do you just need to assign the relevant processing classes, accumulation classes. Okay. When it comes to the EC, EC don't EC may do the calculations very uh, I mean, very limited. Okay, it don't have a capability. The the product uh, build in the such a way that you it's you can maintain the data, but you cannot do any calculations. So that means if I want to calculate the tax based on the data maintenance for an employee in the in, in the employee center, because your payroll info types is uh, payroll info types or personal information is being transferred into the SAP HCM payroll execution. So if I maintain employee salary in the EC system, in the EC system. EC don't have a capability that based on the, this basic pay, how much is the tax employee supposed to do for the current month? That calculation, the system don't have, that EC don't have. Only you can record the data. You can maintain the data, like a employee's salary is this month 10,000, or this month employee's allowance is 15,000. This employee uh, work schedule is some uh, Monday to Friday. So this information you can record, but you cannot capture that information and you cannot execute the payroll because that product is built only for only for the data maintenance. Any questions on this so far? No. So uh, 
this is a EC. Okay. This is your HCM and this is EC. Okay. So coming to the client's data maintenance point of view. Okay. So this they are, they are already uh, I mean uh, employee central is already in, uh, occupied with the huge market and the, most of the clients are using uh, employee central for maintaining their data and this is also there in the market the sap hcm i'm not talking about at on the ecp i am talking about sap hcm or sap payroll engine okay this is also most of the clients are using and this is a most uh, uh, i mean uh, demanded tool for the sap payroll okay. so this they already clients are using and this is also using because every month to execute my payroll i need the master data and for that i i mean uh, as a sap i told them that use a ec system so ec i'm using i'm maintaining a data how come the data come to the ecp that uh, sorry sap hcm system because ec and sap both are different systems okay EC and SAP HCM both are different systems. So, for, for execute, if, if you make any employee's basic pay uh, changes for an employee from 10,000 to 15,000, that data should come from SAP, uh, EC to SAP HCM. Otherwise, system won't consider. Okay. So, in that case, what clients has to maintain EC system for maintaining the data and SAP HCM system for executing their payroll. Okay, for executing their payroll payroll based on their uh, delta changes or variable changes, come I mean, uh, I mean uh, executing of last payroll to current month payroll. So for that, to bring that data from EC to ECP, uh, SAP HCM, you have uh, two options. One thing is you can extract the data from EC and upload it to the SAP HCM system, which is a bit hectic for the users because every month they have to extract the data and they have to uh, upload into upload into the SAP HCM, okay, which is a hectic and there is a chances of manual errors. The second thing here, uh, second thing here is, uh, you even here, uh, second thing here is, you if, if option two is, you have to use a CPI. CPI is a middleware. Middleware in the sense, you maintain the data in the EC system, this place, and through CPI, that is field to field mapping. Suppose in EC, I have an employees employees class. Okay, employee class is equal to employee employee uh, employee group in a ECP system, in the HCM system. Okay, so in if I maintain employee class in a EC system, which is equal to my HCM employee group. If I maintain the employment type in a EC, which is equal to my employment uh, subgroup in a ECP uh, in the HCM system. So we need to buy a CPA license and we need to migrate EC or integrate EC fields, field to field map, mapping. In EC, if I have a EC uh, employee class, then I, that should be mapped with the employee group. If EC having MLM employment type, then it should be mapped with the employee subgroup. In EC, if I maintain a pay group, that should be mapped with the payroll area. So likewise, we have to do the field to field mapping field to field mapping okay the technical fields in ec you will have a external code ecp you, uh, sorry sap hcm you will have a technical fields so that tech, that field to field mapping is required for that we have to use a cpi so to execute my payroll on the sap hcm uh, on premise system i need a three licenses think from the client's perspective one thing is ec license you need Second thing is payroll engine uh, license is required. That is SAP HCM, this one, okay? And the third thing is you should, you need a CPI because if you don't want to go, I mean, uh, download and upload process is a very hectic process every month. So you, if, if any data is missing, then again, you have to download and upload. So that process takes a lot of time. So to avoid that, that is not a preferable option also. So the option to, uh, the best option is go with the CPI. For that, you should have a CPA license. So three licenses required. And the fourth thing is, if you have a SAP on-premise system, the server has to maintain by the clients itself. Okay, that means they should maintain a client server and they should have a database team, they should have a base system. Okay, so with, with considering all this, it's a cost effective for the clients. Clear so far on this?
any any confusion i'm just no. explaining the backbone or the current process and i'm not at uh, entered into the ecp ecp uh, functional so uh, kartik when he said that we need a middleware uh, from uh, uh, ec to hcm so if we are using the payroll then that middleware would not be required uh, for the ecp correct ECP not required. That's what ECP I didn't enter so far. This is how if you are using a SAP on-premise system and the EC as a separate system for that, if you if your payroll engine is an on-premise system, then you need a CPI, CPI middleware. Okay. Coming to the CPI, uh, ECP ECP is not required. That I will explain in the next uh, topic. So first I'm explaining. Okay. So let's suppose you 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 uh, SAP HCM on-premise system is a older version which uh, most of the clients are using and they want to migrate they want to maintain a data employees data in the ec system they can go with it if that if they are up if they adopted the ec employee central then employee central is a cloud and sap hcm is a on-premise system okay to integrate these two systems you you need a middleware that is a cpa okay so this in this case client but are three licenses one thing is ec cpi and sap hcm which is a cost burden for the clients okay this is how current process okay. current process and i mean before implement the employee central payroll okay so to avoid all this sap brings a new concept called employee central payroll okay so that is a this is a, how your employee central payroll so employee central payroll is a advanced version or cloud version of your sap hcm on premise system okay that means touch phone versus your uh, sorry keypad phone versus your touch phone the functionalities is additional compared to the keypad no keypad phone but you can still make a call okay so in the same way your sap hcm whatever hcm on premise system whatever the functionality is there that everything functionality kept as is with the additional features as a payroll control center uh, and uh, some cloud cloud flexible uh, functionalities and they bring that sap on premise box this one this is my on premise box okay first one this one okay let's assume that this is my uh, sap on premise i am bringing that on premise into cloud okay the login process the credentials the transaction uh, sorry the, the login login process uh, is a different uh, sorry the transaction codes uh, the payroll engine execution process pay pcr schemas and your data validations everything is remain same in a cloud the only example i want to i want to maintain employees master data the transaction code is pa30 so that that option is there thus you can use the same transaction code the only difference here is the only difference here is you can you will have a two options to log in into your ec payroll one thing is you can log in with using a web url like a how you log in into the google with using a url or how you log in into the employee center in the same way we can log in into the sap ecp payroll through a url first thing and you will also have a other alternate uh, option that you can also log in through sap gui two options are there two ways are possible you can log in to the system as a consultant okay from the from the background here is the uh, cloud uh, the box uh, the ecp and from uh, scm sorry hcm and premise box kept into cloud box okay so i will tell you what is the benefit of this is it clear this till this stage if you have any questions let me know i will explain no okay. i think what is this payroll control center i will explain i will explain i am talking about only this part okay are you my cousin hello hello no no yeah. don't have any question are you able to see my cursor my my yes. cursor i am yes, going yes. so i am yes, talking yes. about this part this part okay i am not at coming to this part this part only okay so that means i am keeping my sap hcm box 
on premise system into cloud okay logging the credentials payroll driver payroll execution data maintenance info types and your transaction codes and your uh, pcr schemas features uh, and what else uh, pay slips visible everything is remains same is your sap hcm on hcm box on premise box okay so the only thing is because the on premise box is a best product for the sap payroll so that's the reason they are not disturbing anything on the sap on premise box they bring that sap on hcm box into cloud this one this one okay i'm just keeping my hcm box into cloud so that will allow you to log in through a url okay now coming to the benefits okay what is the benefit of with using this okay uh, benefits in the sense how this data flow the main problem here is data flow so this is my employee central okay which assume that you already have an employee central this one this one okay and this one you have a separate sap hcm i am bringing that sap hcm box into cloud okay so here employees maintain the data here hrs maintain the data employees maintain the data and uh, any other payroll admin if they want to make any corrections they maintain so this is your system of records this one employee central leave this control uh, payroll control center for time being okay this is your employee central so here you are maintaining all the employees related data okay whether it is a payroll related uh, personal administration related organization related or uh, time related absences everything okay you are maintaining a data so everything i maintain the data in the employee central i in the sense maybe employees maybe hrt maybe payroll admin team okay so through the api uh, i mean api url or aps application program interface through this standard interface standard in the sense it's a inbuilt between this employee central and employee central payroll okay through this standard interface build interface builder it's a default uh, default uh, delivered by the sap you no need to do additional configuration for the interface it's a default inbuilt the only thing is we need to activate the url we need to call the url that's it we need to call the urls and there is a one configuration where you need to go and maintain the url so that these two systems guest gets interact so here in employee central i maintain this employee central payroll url in this employee central so that this employee central recognize that yes i have a integrated with this employee central payroll this system it is integrated with the employee central system so that means i need to send the data from this system to this system when the replication program execute that that brings the data through this api url this api url reads all the your employee central data every time you execute this is nothing but a your back end database uh, uh, database back end database okay so that reads all your information based on your point to point configuration configuration in the sense here uh, earlier we discussed right, with using a middleware you need to map the field to field here no field to field here we need to do the value to value so example payroll area in ec we call it as a pay group okay pay group is payroll area so in pay group i maintain a 01 or 001 in ec okay if i maintain a 001 in ec but in in uh, ecp my payroll is a area is allowed only for the two characters so i maintain 001 is equivalent to 01 so sap already provided some data models data type models okay with using that so i have a i want to map a payroll area okay so what what i need to do i need to select the pay group that is a data model so i once i select the pay group i will, I, have, I will have a three uh, three columns first i need to select the data model then a data type model then i need to select the ec value not the ec field value ec value is 0001 ecp value is 01 so that may be 01 that may be ga gb or abc what ab whatever so here also it may be 01 or 001 or 
they may use a ABCD something. So that means that mapping you have to do. That means you are mapping a value to value, not the field to field mapping. So this uh, API integrate read this information from this point to point, and I want to from this execute. I, when I execute the replication program in the employee central table, data from EC it will read all the information, and based on your P2P mapping, P2P mapping in this is I'm reading when I execute. This uh, employee central payroll, it's read the data from here and it will replicate into the ECP system based on your P2P. P2P in the sense, yes, I am I am calling the pay group. Pay group value maintained in an EC for an employee is 0001, which is equal to 01. So go and uh, go and maintain the 01 for the employee. Okay. Here they maintain a hiding before in the initial in initial replication, even employee is not hired. Hiring H in H in EC they have a 10 characters allowed. So what they maintain hiring six characters they maintain. But here uh, the hiring is allowed only one character. The, the field is allowed only one character. I will keep the I am talking about a uh, code uh, quotes okay not description. So I will maintain H. So this hiring is equal to H. So this hiring when when employee action or event in ec events ecp is a high uh, actions so when event maintained a hiring then it will through this api uh, application api url uh, replication process it will check for the h so if h already maintained h configure is not already there then it will trigger the h action for this employee for the new uh, new hiring employee and this the hiring is equal to H will be maintained here. This place. So employee having a ABC is a pay component. In EC, we call it as a pay component. Pay component is equal to waste type in a EC. Okay. So, so here they maintain a pay group, uh, pay component for an employee that is calling as a A, B, C, D, E. Five characters are there. I mean uh, the pay component maintained. And here uh, it's allowed only four characters. Okay, I will maintain A B C D. Okay, and I will maintain A B C D is equal to A B C D. This is here A B C D E that is pay component, and here it is a wasted. Through this point to point application, there is a pay component underscore type data model. So uh, data type model. With using that, it will read the this application program uh, api url read the pay component that maintained for the employee that is a b c d e is linked with the a b c d in ect so here you are doing a mapping this replication program this this uh, middleware url this is not a middleware actually this uh, standard application api url uh, read the information with considering your P2P configuration, it will go and load the data into ECP system. Why we need to do, do this? Because once you ECP configuration, because in SAP HCM, once you configure your, uh, I mean, once you implement all your uh, setup, okay, in a regular data maintenance, in a support project, in a, in a regular day, uh, payroll execution, you need a master data. One time settlement you can do, the configuration you can do. The configuration you have to done in this HCM cloud. So the configuration or implementation what we do in the on-premise system that has to done map and that has to done as a mandatory. That means if I want to map A B C D E A B C D in this ECP, first I need to create I need to create or I need to configure A B C D waste in my HCM system. Then only you can do a mapping. But if I want to do the mapping of the payroll area, first I should configure a payroll area and I should maintain the period parameters, uh, period parameters and uh, date modifiers and your payroll periods, everything. Then only your then only your pay payroll, uh, sorry, this pay group will get mapped to your payroll area. So the the this integration comes into picture once your implementation, once your configuration completed in the both the systems in a EC and a ECP. Okay, so ECP first I need to configure like a 
company code, personal area, everything. This replication is only for the master data. First, the thumb rule. This replication is only for the uh, master data, not for the configuration replication. So you have to, in the initial stage, you have to treat that I am implementing a SAP HCM. So you have to implement everything. Once you implement, okay, once you implement, then once you implement the EC system and once you implement the ECP system, this EC, you are giving access to the employees for maintaining their personal data or uh, limited access, limited data, whatever they may, uh, whatever is accessible and the HR system and payroll admin. This access will give to all the employees to view their address, to view their contact details, to view their personal uh, basic salary, pay slips, everything. So this one in SAP HCM, SAP HCM in the previous one also, generally we don't give this access to employees. This is allowed only for the users or payroll admin. In the same way, this is allowed only for the payroll admin or whoever, uh, only for the payroll admin who are whoever executing a payroll. Okay. So this is a backend system. This don't have a payroll execution capability. This don't have a data maintenance because if I maintain a data, it will again become a, uh, your uh, ECC system. Okay. So even though it is a, it is in a cloud to maintain the data, you have to go to PA20, PA30 like that. But here it's not like that. You can enter. I mean, the restriction will be done only for uh, your data, like a ESSMSS. Okay. This is similar to ESSMSS. In a ESS, you have a limited options. Only you can replicate, you can uh, maintain some uh, uh, leaves data or some address something. But here, it's a full access to the employees for a visibility and limited access for the modify. And this employee central access will give to all employees. Whereas this ECP, either in a HCM system on premise or in a ECP, this access will give only for the payroll admin. So, through once you maintain the data, when when I replicate this program, when I click on the replication uh, once com sorry once complete the implementation, then on a regular basis, regular payroll every month, I need a master data for executing a payroll. That will take care. I mean, regular payroll data and initial load also from this system to this system. Okay, so that initial load or uh, regular data replication or maintenance in one system. And you're replicating data from this system to this system because this is my payroll engine so you need to send you need to get the data from ec that will help through replication program and this example if you have a 600 employees or 700 employees to prepare your data up to prepare uh, this uh, actually this is how uh, the data will replicate from ec to ecp here there is no middleware first thing and there is no server maintenance from the client side. This is a cloud. Okay. The cloud servers are maintained by the SAP. So you no need to maintain the cloud server. If you don't have a cloud server, if you don't have a database maintenance from your system, you no need a database team. You no need the basis team. You no need the server from your side. So that which is a cost benefit for the clients. And you no need a middleware with this EC payroll. So that middleware is not required. The data will flow from EC to ECP and this in a standard SAP functionality. Okay, through a license, you will get this replication inbuilt. But the mandatory thing here is you should have an EC system. This ECP pair for ECP payroll, you should have a EC system. And through this point to point replication, the data will flow from EC to EC. So this is not for the configuration replication this is only for the data replication either it is an initial or regular payroll data replication or data uh, transfer from ec to ecp from one system to other system this will help users uh, i no need to go on download i no need to do the p2p mapping i no need to do the uh, do the uh, i mean uh, field to field mapping nothing okay in a standard processor you will replicate data from EC to ECP, okay? And this is a uh, benefit. And if I have, and this is very faster than the previous any other process, okay? 
like if you have a thousand or twelve thousand uh, two thousand employees lsmw data if you click on a lsmw replication how fast the data replicated into uh, how fast the data loaded into the sap on-premise system in the same way this ec2 ecp data replication okay let's suppose example of thousand employees data in the uh, thousand employees data replication is required from ec2 ecp from this scratch okay? this system don't have uh, any data you are doing an initial load you are doing an initial load to replicate all this data from ec2 ecp for all the thousand employees including a hiring to maintaining all the relevant info types like a hiring organization data maintenance personal data maintenance address okay and uh, payroll information bank details everything it takes hardly 10 minutes hardly 10 minutes you can the system will replicate all the data from ec2 if your configuration is correct configuration in sense your your p2p mapping is correct and your configuration the sap hcm is correct then the data of thousand employees data also it will it will replicate from ec to ecp uh, uh, with a very fast process okay any doubts on this before moving to the click payroll control center is it understandable first thing yes okay yes, so the, yeah please please go ahead on. it's it's understandable okay so and one more one thing i think uh, in my previous batch somebody understand that through this cp implementation okay we, we as a implementation partner uh, they thought that we will bring this cloud version uh, we will bring this sap bo on premise box into cloud no we will not do that this is a inbuilt this is a separate and this is separate okay this has to go in the fresh implementation fresh license not with this one let's suppose you already have a sap hcm on premise <coughs> box you cannot move from this on premise box to cloud that is a sap product so you have to buy a license so once you buy a license this will be no useful once your family once your use this ecp system okay this is a different and this is different so that sap delivered the product sap built this process so if if you have a sap on-premise system you or sap cannot convert this into cloud so to convert your system into employee central payroll you have to buy a new license for the employee central payroll and once you implement the uh, once you buy the employee central payroll license then you have to configure your data from this scratch you have to implement and you have to go with a fresh implementation on the employee central payroll okay most of the clients whoever is completed or whoever uh, their license is uh, renewed so in that before I mean, uh, rather than going a uh, sap on premise uh, renewal they are preferring to go with this one because it, it, it's it's having the only license cost once it is completed then it's a cost benefit for the clients because server maintenance is not required and your data maintenance team is not required this system is not required security team are not required and your uh, uh, your middleware uh, license is not required with compared to all this so if you i mean if clients spend time I and mean, money on this ecp license it's a benefit for them okay so that's the reason they are most of the clients are preferring for this ecp implementation okay. nowadays i uh, hope you guys know this i mean uh, since last four to five years uh, four to five years there is no sap implementations okay now uh, since last two, two to three years majority of the clients whoever is working on the sap hcm on premise they are migrating into employee central payroll implementation because even though they spend some time for now we rather than going for the uh, renewal okay like uh, sap hcm on premise renewal this is in a wrong long run they, it is benefit for them as well uh, in a cost effect cost purpose as well as the executing purpose also okay how the benefits is coming we'll, we'll discuss on the payroll control center okay so so far we discussed data maintenance in iec 
and data replicate from EC to ECP. I'm talking about only data, not the configuration. This configuration has to done here. This configuration has to done here. Configuration, whatever done in this EC cannot be replicated from this place. And this configuration cannot be replicated. This has to done the implement the configuration or implementation has to done separately in the EC and ECP. Only data can be replicated from EC to ECP through this point to point replication. So once it is done, so far uh, the data, I mean, so far it's a cloud, uh, SCP HCM thing into cloud. Okay. So to execute a payroll, to execute a payroll from the user point of view, uh, the, if, if it is on premise, you have to log in into the on premise system. This one to execute a payroll, you have to, uh, the user has to log in into the on premise system. So through this, pay, uh, through this employee central payroll, the execution will be done in the payroll control center that is, which is a part of your ec okay when you log in into the ec system sap brings a new concept called payroll control center okay this is a database packet system you are sending a data from this ec to ecp and your uh, once you send a data from ec to ecp again you are come here in the uh, payroll execution execution done in the employee central itself that means you no need to log into the ecp system because it is a backend system it, it, it is ec don't have a payroll calculation capacity that's the reason i am sending a data to ecp and again i am executing a payroll in the ec itself not in the ecp see that option is not option is already available you can execute both the way both the areas in the ec and as well as in ecp but from the user point of view the the, uh, the preferable uh, i mean uh, the best approach or the standard procedure is the payroll has to execute in the payroll control center okay so this place you will have a switch okay this is a back end your engine okay so when you click on the engine button here the uh, switch here that this this switch go and trigger the payroll engine here this will execute the payroll driver here and it will generate the payroll results this place but execution button is available in the payroll control center that means payroll control center is nothing but you are executing a payroll from ec not from ecp okay even though ecp your payroll engine is a packet but execution will be done in the ec system that means you are you are, uh, you are pressing a switch on this place this through the standard integration standard behavior okay this switch read the data from i mean this switch go and trigger the payroll engine this place execute the payroll engine in this place okay you can see the results example if i execute a payroll this place okay you can see the payroll results you can see the pay, uh, waste of reports or everything in this place but execution will be done this place okay. The both options is available. You can also you can execute in the ECP and you can also execute in the payroll control center. But from the user point of view, from the product delivery uh, best option is you have to execute in this place. Okay. Can I, what can is I ask, so can yeah, I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. I mean, normally when you, when you on premise payroll, you, you normally have to release payroll area and all that kind of stuff. So all that happens. Uh, that's like when you know in payroll on is on on premise you have like you have to release it and payroll area and all that kind of different steps so all that will happen just from from ec side then you don't have to worry about that i mean uh, uh, for this so if you want to release a payroll control record right control yeah. record yeah. to set the to release a payroll control record it should be released for payroll right so that you will have a two options you can directly log into the uh release for payroll or release for corrections okay okay or a control record this is an option one okay option two in the payroll control center you will mm -hmm. have a some data pro uh, some process types okay okay process how we execute a payroll payroll uh, uh calculate how we execute a payroll driver like executing a payroll you have to set up some process types okay in yeah. the same way you will have an option to change set the control record or uh, set okay. the control release for payroll right. release for corrections exit the payroll that option is available through this for payroll, uh, how we are executing a payroll uh, payroll right in the same way we have an option to uh, change the 
control record in a different stages. That option okay. is also available through this process types. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. So yeah. that option is available. It's it's a user choice whether they want to go directly and change the control record in a ECP system or they want to trigger or they want to change it from ECP uh, in the EC system itself. It's a chance. It's a, it's, it's again user for flexibility. Okay, thanks. Yes, thanks. Very clear. Okay, so with this payroll control center, what is the benefit? Okay, so I'm just executing rather than uh, executing a ECP uh, payroll uh, payroll driver, I am executing into ECC EC system. What is the benefit for me? Okay, let's leave this for time being. In a general payroll term, payroll uh, execution. Okay, <coughs> example, in, uh, in, in, uh, one client the payroll. Uh, pay date is 25th. So, 20, if the pay date is 25th, the users, the payroll admin, has to put a cut uh, cut off date for the payroll uh, payroll execution uh, payroll data received. Uh, maybe 10th or 15th. Uh, sorry, 10th or 10th. Okay. So they will keep this 15 days, 10th to 25th the pay date. They will keep this 15 days buffer time to complete their reconciliation. Before finalize the payroll, the payroll admin do lots of validations. Okay, example some validations: bank data missing, bank empl employees bank account is missing, employees address is missing. Address may not be important for the payroll uh, execution point of view, but some legal reports need address details. Example for UK: if you don't maintain address, your RTA report will not generate. So that means it it, it will not throw any error. When you are executing a payroll through this payroll engine, because it reads only the whether my configuration is correct or not, whether my uh, PCR schemas is correct or not, it won't check the whether address is maintained or not. That that uh, that uh, I mean that condition is not maintained delivered by the SCP because address is not mandatory from the payroll engine point of view. But when it comes to the user point of view or a payroll admin point of view, that address may be important because they want to, uh, to complete their, their uh, legal reports, the address is mandatory and bank data is missing. And I want to see whose check payment is ma maintained. Okay, because the data is coming from EC. In EC, if you want to extract a report, it's it's very difficult because first you have to create a report and you have to extract. If I want to see an employees who have who have a, a pay component as a triple zero one, in EC it's very difficult. Because first you have to build a report and you have to set all the requirements and your date, date conditions, everything. Then only you can execute data from EC. So every month, if I want to extract the data, it's for extracting or for putting our reports also. It takes a lot of time, and a payroll admin or EC admin has to depends again on the EC consultant. When it comes to the ECP, if you go to AC6, the report is inbuilt. You based on your requirement. You can extract the date data within a fraction of seconds. Okay, the, based on that, if uh, based on that, this they bring that functionality into this place. So when I am executing a payroll control center, so I'm choosing. I want to see I, as a payroll admin, I'm doing some validations, reconciliations before executing a payroll from a mass data point of view. I want to see whose address is missing. I want to see whose bank details is missing. I want to see whose address and whose address is maintained as a permanent or temporary address. Okay, I want to see some particular uh, basic particular waste payment maintained as a zero because that payment that pay component should be have a some payment, but by mistake they maintain as a zero, or whose basic pay is zero, who is leaving the organization in this month, who is joined, who is a new hire in the in this month. So these are all master data validations. That validations for user they spend a lot of time. First they will extract the data. I mean, let's uh, if you think of, if you take a SAP HCM into the picture because HCM is a data right. It, it reads the data only from HCM box. So what they do they extract the AC16. They, they they do the each and every info type. I mean based on their reconciliation what they want to do. And they, once the reconciliation is completed, whoever is data is missing. Again they go and maintain the data. So it takes a lot of time with this master data through this payroll control center you can set the alerts alerts means 
I want to find an employee whose address is missing. This payroll control center, this payroll control center directly pick that employee. Yes, out of this entire list of employees, this few employees or this one employee or two employees address is missing. So it will directly pick up that. So your reconciliation is doing by the your payroll control center through the standard behavior. So for this, we have to create our alerts in the backend. So once you create alerts for the uh, for the address, this will pick up address uh, employees. This employee address is missing. You go on maintain. This employee bank details is missing. This employee uh, from the address point of view. Okay. This employee. These many employees are leaving in this uh, in this month. These employees. These many employees are withdrawn. These many employees. These are the employees are new hire in this uh, in this month. So that that alerts that mass rate alerts will be captured by this payroll controls control center as an additional feature. Okay. Now this is from the master data point of view. Okay. Once the payroll admin done the reconciliation on the data specs data perspective, then once they execute the payroll, once they execute a payroll, if they have if they have any payroll related uh, errors like a schema incorrect, PCS incorrect like that, in that case that will Anyhow, that will be identified by your payroll driver, and it will throw an, uh, and it will throw an error until unless you don't resolve that, it won't come. So that functionality is available is there in a payroll control center and your uh, this uh, on-premise sorry uh, SAP ECP both uh, both areas. Okay. Once I can execute a payroll, now the second reconciliation, what I do, I will check who's I mean now I will check gross payment comparison. So I want to see the gross payment comparison compared to last month because sometimes there may be an error they may be entered incorrectly some employees supposed to receive a 10,000 for an a pay for a pay component by mistake the typo error they entered 10 1 lakh or by mistake they entered 1000 maybe employee may be overpaid or underpaid so to find that employee in a SAP HCM system you have to extract the report you have to do the comparison and you have to do all the reconciliation but with this payroll control center, if you set a value, like I want to see whose gross increment compared to last month is more than 1 lakh or more than 10%, more than 15%, more than 5%. Okay. So that it will find the employee directly that this employee gross is more than the certain percentage. The percentage you have to enter, that value you have to enter. It may be percentage or value. If it is a cross related value or if you want to do the comparison on the net pay and you can set the net pay, the percentage is more than the some certain value uh, which we maintain in the back end system. Okay. So through, that means it's also do your it's also do the reconciliation of your payroll results and it will identify that these employees having a gross difference. You have set up percentage of 15 percent and this employees percentage is more than 60 15 percent. So kind to do the reconciliation. Once you do the reconciliation, if you feel that yes, this employee reconciliation is correct, you can ignore. ignore. If if that employee data was entered incorrectly, you can go and correct it. So both the options is available. And at the same time, you can do the uh, net pay comparison also. So for these comparisons, for the master data, for the recon, uh, for the results validations, for for the recon results reconciliations business or payroll admin spends a lot of time as per my understanding they spend minimum seven to seven, minimum seven days depends on the employees or uh, clients volume or workforce this will help within a one hour it will finalize the values within a one execution one hour in the sense uh, as it is a cloud uh, execution it takes some depends on your volume it, it will take some uh, time so but it will final it will give the final list this employee's basic pay is missing. This employee's address is missing. This employee, uh, uh, I mean, this employee grass pay is more than the ten percent or more than the one lakh compared to last month. This employee net pay is more than the certain percentage or certain value. This employee cost center is missing. Okay. This employee, some any any uh, conditions you put in the system that will identify. This is a one problem, and as, uh, this is a, sorry, this is a one benefit. The, this two are the payroll control center alerts. Then the third type of alert here is somebody make a corrections in the system and we forgot to 
I mean, uh, the control record is set uh, for the last in mean, the control record set as a 2020 example. Now we are running a payroll for this September or October 2021. Okay. So system control record, they didn't stop because they have a receiver, they have a business requirement that don't make any restriction on the control record. The employees are allowed, employees are business are allowed to maintain the data from August uh, from January 2021. But you want to do some reconciliation. Why is this data correct or not? Is this retro retro run is correct or not? So that alerts also you can put. Let's suppose I have put alerts as a 60 days. If my payroll, any of the employee payroll goes retro more than 60 days, that means I'm executing a payroll for the October. If it goes back to uh, July, I mean, prior to August, it will trigger and it will find the employee. It will give an alert in the payroll control center itself. It will say that this employee retro is more than 60 days. You go and validate. So rather than doing your reconciliation, system doing a reconciliation and it's showing a final, uh, uh, final uh final uh, alerts so based on alerts now you as an admin you do whether this retro is correct or not if retro is correct you can you can leave it if the retro entry is wrong you will have an option to modify it and at the same time address and at the same time results okay this is a third type of alerts okay and this is third type of alert and these are the benefits of the alerts and through this payroll control center in general in general in a sap hcm if you want to execute a uh, posting if you want to execute a posting if you want to test the posting posting to finance okay you should have a payroll execution alive the payroll should be run in a live live in the sense at least you should have maybe maybe that run that payroll run might not be a final run I mean, as soon as you run uh, run a live run number of times, that will go right. But at least one live run should be done for sending a file to uh, for sending payroll results to finance. When it comes to the payroll control center, they, how you are executing a payroll simulation without running a live in the same day, we will have an option to execute the posting also into simulation without a live results that means you are executing a payroll simulation error you are checking a payroll simulation errors and you are also checking the posting simulation errors without running a payroll you don't need to run the payroll in a live mode first you do the posting also in a simulation mode test run without live payrolls and you can do the reconciliation once that reconciliation completed, once the, once the uh, payroll uh, payroll simulation and posting simulation is error free, now you can go and execute the live payroll run. That live payroll run simulation, everything will be done in this place, and the switch is available in this place. Only execution part will be done here. You can see only how many employees picked up, how many employees, uh, which payroll area, which period, that log, that general or uh, when when you when you when you execute a payroll uh, payroll uh, driver you will see the uh, you will see the general information statistics these employees these many employees picked up these many employees selected these many employees messages received like that thus that log will be up here not on the not these schemas pcs log okay? so it's just a general uh, overview that how many employees picked up like this so this is a one bit okay you can do this uh, you can do the payroll execution you can do the posting simulation you can do the posting to finance we can do the uh, posting to bank pre dme and dme okay this executions is available through this payroll control center so on the whole ecp is a back end system ec is my front end system the main aim here is ec i delivered as a data uh, maintenance system okay so i cannot allow this to execute a payroll this i delivered it as a payroll engine i cannot bring this ec functionality to ecp because if i bring that i cannot give uh, access to all employees and it will become again it will become a ecc system which i don't want for that reason they bring standard replication process from ec to ecp and you can 
replicate data and you can execute a payroll in an easy system itself. Okay, this is how you do. So payroll control center, we can see the we can see the policies and alerts, payroll and posting simulation, master data validations prior to the process live payroll, assign alerts to users. How you are assigning a tickets to employees in a service now? I mean, I'm just taking a ticketing tool as a service now. Maybe others use other ticketing tool. I'm just telling assigning a tickets to users, live payroll and bank transfer, posting to finance. Everything is possible from the payroll control center. Any doubts so far? Is it clear? Questions? Yes. Yes. It is clear. Yes. Very good. So for, for what purpose we need to log in into the ECPC? Sorry. This uh, one one thing I forgot to tell. Once we complete the payroll, this one, okay. Generally, the payslip will be generated in this place, right? Through the standard setup that is calling as the SAML2 configuration. Employees can view this payslip in this EC only. Okay, no need to print and send it back to the employees. So once your payroll is completed, once your payroll control record is exit, the employees can view their payslip in EC system itself. So that means payroll basically visibility is also available in the EC system. So that means EC is a one stop solution for all your requirements except the back end related, uh, back end related reports or uh, reports or uh, changes. Okay. This is related to payroll control center. For what purpose or for in which scenarios we need to log into the employee central payroll? If you want to build a custom report, if you want to build a custom report, for that case, you have to log in into the custom report build and execution. Both the cases, you have to log in into the ECP system because you are executing a payroll in the EC, this place. But results start storing in this place only, not here. Your results, everything is storing here only. When you build a custom report, since the program reads the information from this place, not this place. And when you are executing a payroll control center also, the payroll control center you are executing under EC box, but it reads the data only from ECP, not from EC. Example, you have maintained employee salary as a 10,000 to 15,000, but you didn't replicate. If you don't replicate, here it's, it's a, it, here it have a only uh, 10,000, which was a old value. It will always consider the data available from ECP, not in the EC. So if you have a cutoff date, if you don't replicate, even the employees make a corrections that will not replicate from EC to ECP until you don't execute this replication program. So below are the different scenarios which we need to log into the ECP system. One thing is custom reports, custom reports bill and custom reports uh, execution. The second thing is government gateway reports like our e filing standard legal reports which you know you need to submit to hm uh, government gateway if i if i'm taking an example of uk for rta reports p 11 reports okay? for that case you have to log in into the ecp system like uh, so this is a one and the third option is uh, third thing is download the dme file and share the band so this is not a this this we have a two options some clients uh, some clients there is a one more alternative option is you will have a middleware, middleware only for the bank.
Kartik, are you telling something? I can't hear you. Not able to hear you, Kartik. Hello? Yes, now. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I had a, I mean, power cut. Okay. So, are you able to hear me? Yes, now okay. Yes, now okay. So, to to finish, the, I mean, uh, to, I mean, uh, some cases, uh, they have, a, I mean, there is a one middleware, okay. Once you execute the pre-DME and DME, in the ECP system, the middleware pick up this bank file, okay, and it will send to the uh, the relevant bank. So if you your client is following that middleware option, then you no need to log into the download. Uh, I mean, you no need to download the DME file. Okay, this is a additional. Uh, I mean, this this is again depends on the client to client. So moving to the next one. Okay, so how this. Uh, payroll in you know, how this integrate okay ec is a system of records so for ecp ec is a system of records so ecp is a two types one thing is ec and ecp both are clouds the other thing is which we discussed in a starting that you have a ecc system and cpi is a middleware ec is a one system so that through the middleware that is a cpi you are transferring data from ec to ec uh, ecc that requires a middleware this cloud don't require any middleware option okay it's a standard and who maintains the data in a system these these are hrbp team payroll and employee supervisor mass data replicate via payroll in employee central payroll okay integration standard integration and this is called a p2p replication via api okay so what data we maintain in the ec system or what data replicate work schedules time sheet time tape like this basic information of related to time will be replicated from ec to ecp and there is a one thing called ui mashups for in ec if you if you if you have some idea about ec ec is a purely related to ompa time here there is no country specific info text data maintained in the ec system because in a standard also they didn't release them. they didn't uh, provide that data option so payroll is purely related to country specific. So some clients, I mean, uh, based on the country specific, you need to maintain the country specific info types. Okay. So for that reason, SAP brings a new concept called UI mashups. So through this UI mashups, I want to maintain a tax information for an employee. EC in EC itself, I can go for the employee and I can maintain the I can call, I can, uh, from the uh, UI mashups option, okay, if I call the relevant info type from EC, that, that relevant info type field from ECP will be visible in the EC system, okay, then you can maintain the data. As soon as you maintain the data, that data will save in an EC as well as in an ECP system. Because why they bring this UI mashups? UI mashups is a country specific. So EC is a EC is not a country specific tool. Hello. Yes. Yes. Clear. Yes. Clear. Yes. So, so then. So it's like in the US yeah. they have like uh, advertised for the states and uh, the state living and working states and the yeah. federal state. So the, all these info types like two thousand eight, nine, and ten, which are very uh, payroll related here. Yeah. Yes, so that that is that info types data maintenance in the EC is not available. So that's a reason because now we are bringing into the ECP, right? So as soon as you integrate with the ECP, you will get a option that you can maintain the uh, static related information through the UI mashups. You are directly saving the data into the ECP, but you are not log logging into the ECP from EC. You are calling an ECP info type and you are saving as soon as you save the data the data will be stored in the both the systems in ec you will have a one one i mean through this you are mashups you can maintain the data of one employee one time let's suppose i have a 100 employees data i need to maintain for that case 
I can use a LSMW or any other BDC reports to load the data directly into the ECP system. This is a other alternative for the bulk loading. As soon as you load the data into the ECP system, the data will update automatically in the ECC or that data will be visible for the uh, visible in the EC system for the relevant employee. So that means the data will be as soon as you maintain the data in a one system, the data will be available in other system only for the UR mashups, not any other info types. Okay, now that not any other data only for the UI mashups. And the second thing here is, I mean, uh, the other one, other thing is payroll users declustering. Declustering in a sense, ECP payroll users are in a tabular format, table format. Every results are stored in a table. When it comes to the employee central payroll, sorry, uh, payroll control center, it's a cloud. It don't have any uh, tables. So to read the data from table and present into in the uh, I mean in the cloud format. They have used a declustering, payroll illness declustering. Declustering is nothing but you are converting a different format for ECP purpose. They, they here, uh, it's not required a function, it's not required a vapor, uh, uh, a vapor involvement. It's just a two table entries. You just go and maintain the tables for which table you want to convert. Once you maintain, the data will fit. So that, that is not a big deal. So, any questions? No. So, what is the benefits of this? Sorry, uh, sorry, can I, sorry, yeah, sorry. Um, <clears throat> sorry. When, you, when you talk about custom reports, so okay. if I create a custom report in as, on, on premise, uh, I presume you can only run it on premise. I cannot run it from uh, EC. Right. Okay. If if the report is related to EC, you can build, but ECP related custom reports cannot execute in the EC under payroll okay. control center. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. And what are the benefits? Okay. So you have, will have an option to log in. I mean, uh, data, you no need to maintain the master data in a, both the systems. Okay. So that this is, that means you maintain the data in a EC system, but that is useful for EC as well as for the ECP. Okay. And one system for all your data maintenance and payroll execution. No basis team is activated is required. As soon as you get the ECP license, you can start working in the SAP ECC system. First basis team has to log in and they do some basic settings and they do some transport request settings initially. Then only they will hand over the system to consultants. But ECP, as soon as you get the license, you can start working. The only thing is you need to create a user IDs on your own. The landscape, the transport movement between across the landscapes are inbuilt. When you get the license, the SAP, SAP already given this uh, for, I mean, uh, flexibility. Your development is linked with your quality, your quality is linked with your production. That that uh, standard build already there, the transport movement uh, integration, it's, it's already inbuilt for your client. And Server maintenance is with the SAP. You need, you no need to maintain. Support pack updates is also done by the SAP. You just need to request a ticket. So they will update. And PCC alerts trigger in a payroll control center. And th these are the different pay payroll control center which we discussed. Alerts. Okay. So coming to the next one. Okay. Uh, this is how the ECP. Uh, I mean, this is how the general overview of the ECP. Any questions so far? That's fine. Fine. Thanks. Okay. Moving to the uh, next one. I mean, I want to tell the content as well. Okay. So ECP is a license. Uh, ECP is an integrated system. Integrate is required an EC and EC, uh, ECP. It's a license based integration. Okay. So we don't have a uh, we don't have the demo system for the ECP. Okay. So what I will cover part of this uh, training. I will cover the terminology between EC and ECP. Provisioning changes. What we do. Okay. And RBP related ECP changes. ECP configuration in the EC system. So in EC because EC consultant doesn't know 
what configuration you have to do in an ECP uh, EC system. So you have to do uh, from the training part, uh, part of training. I will explain what changes we need to do in the EC system related to ECP. Okay, and payroll unified configuration, how this run and how the data replication setup, business functions activations, four data services, other other ECP related things, and P2P configuration. So I will cover except the SAP HCM implement uh, uh, implementation or configuration. Okay. Other than that, or I can say in a single word, the gap between SAP HCM versus SAP EC payroll. That entire gap I will cover. Okay. So because the course content is for the integration part, because ECP is also integration between EC and ECP. And uh, the, uh, the part of this training, I will not cover the SAP HCM implementation. So that SAP HCM implementation is a separate uh, one. So I will cover whatever the additional features or functionality delivered by the SAP part of ECP. Okay. Uh, ECP and uh, SAP HCM, that gap I will cover. Okay. And as we don't have a, uh, I mean, uh, uh, demo for the ECP. Okay. I have a, some ECC system. I will show wherever it may go because some areas are similar to the EC and uh, ECC and ECP. So that I will present and wherever the screen presentation is not required. I took the screenshots and I will present that this is how and this is what we need to do. Okay. For EC, I have a, uh, a training link. I mean, demo link that I will share. Okay. Any any questions? No. No. Fine. Thanks. So this is about our. Yeah. This is about your uh, ECP uh, training and the training content as well. So you just uh, give a feedback to the organization. Okay. The training institute. They will get back to you. Sure, Karthik. Yeah. Any any questions? Any questions? Uh, what about the practicals, uh, Karthik? You know, are we going to get the ECP cloud system access? Any uh, a sales demo access for that? No, we don't have any sales demo which is not delivered by the SCP Also, we don't have a sales demo practice for the uh, ECP. ECP is a license based uh, system. So, okay. if, if not only in this training, anywhere, the, there is no license training for the sorry, uh, demo uh, practice link for the uh, this ECP. The only thing is, I can show the uh, screenshot presentation and I will explain step by step what we need to do, where we need to do, and what is the purpose of this. In, and it's not that much difficult that it easily understand okay most of the terminology is uh, most of the terminology most of the concept which you already uh, heard in your uh, in your uh, past experience the only thing is we need to understand what exactly that word and how to do the mapping and way to do the configurations how to understand the if the error is comes i will also cover the uh, how the replication happens and how to understand the error log and how to analyze the errors and uh, how to rectify the errors. What are the different type of scenarios or errors which we uh, receive when we replicate the data? And what is the solution for that? Some real time issues, real time scenarios, I will explain. Okay. So, and, and, and coming to my case, I'm not from an entrepreneurial background. I'm a completely success factor consultant, been started my career. I've uh, been okay. now five years, five years into the success factor itself and okay. handled many global rollouts on the employee central side and in and out of the employee central, I know, but I'm not into the SAP on premise payroll side or this kind of uh, stuff. I don't know. So okay. how, how it's going to be helpful for me because I'm not from on premise because most okay. of the scenarios from this all from the taken from the on premise itself. Right. So then yes. how it's going to be helpful for me. Okay. Uh, to answer to your question, first thing is 
if you if you wish to work on the employee central payroll payroll in the sense if you want to work as a consultant okay payroll consultant yes you should know the sab hcm okay if you are working as a if if you are getting a chance to work on the integration consultant or if you working if you are getting a chance to uh, work as a project manager or a project handler for the ecp okay in that cases it will help but if you are looking for working as an employee central payroll consultant so to become a payroll consultant i mean employees even though you see the hcm or uh, uh, ecp first you should know the sap on premise uh, functionality because this is a base for the uh, ecp implementation mm -hmm. that is a prerequisites i can say okay for a manager for a manager or for a integration integrator uh, integrator integration consultant for them basic knowledge is fine basic knowledge in the sense uh, the easy and how this uh, uh, the mapping what we are mapping yeah. so maybe that would be fine for them integration purpose but when it comes mm -hmm. to the payroll consultant even though you once you integrate all this the execution has to be done from your end you have to write a pcr you have to you have to configure the waste types you have to set the process like that so for that know the background mm -hmm. because okay. that's how the product deliver and that is advanced i mean additional uh, i mean functional for the your sap hcm okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay yeah any more questions No, fine. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for joining the session. Okay. Thank you, Karthik. Thank, Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.